the Reach Brothers. Uh, I'm Kevin. I play guitar. I'm Charlie. I'm drummer, keyboard, and lead singer, and we are from Tampa Bay, Florida. Yeah, we just actually we kicked it off uh, Saturday in Vero Beach. Um, and, yeah, and then we'll be heading up to New York. So we're stoked. Really excited to be there uh, on the 20th. Yeah, uh, we played there for the first time last summer at the Iridium, and we're coming back to the Iridium, and which is really cool. Um, we just it's just so exciting, you know. It's just another level when you're playing in like New York City, you know, like yeah. Well, you know for sure. So like, it just it adds a total new uh, level of excitement for us. Definitely. Especially with the history of music there. I, I mean, just to be a part of that in mm -hmm. general, it's it's awesome. You, uh, we're bringing out our friend Vinny Lopez, who is the uh, original drummer for Bruce Springsteen. Um, he uh, he's the one who hired Bruce and started the E Street Band, and we've been jamming with him for a couple of years because he uh, he comes down here for. Uh, <clears throat> vacation every year and we kind of met him and started jamming with him down here and whenever we go up north we play with him he's super awesome he's helped us out a lot and uh yeah we've got some other awesome players uh, we're bringing up a sax player from uh, university of miami who's really awesome and mm -hmm. it's gonna be really cool and and we're filming the whole show and so uh that's 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 a, the coolest part we're going up there to make a concert movie so oh yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's definitely amazing. been it's definitely been an honor, um, and the Chicago tours were such an incredible experience to have early on in our career to get that big stage experience and to learn from a band who's been, you know, I think they're in their 50th year of touring right now. I mean, that's just insane, like consecutive year. They haven't taken a year off, and that's just mind-blowing to us. So to be able to get advice from them and then see it in action was, like, such an eye-opening experience, and we learned so much. Um, and, yeah, we're just we're just grateful for those opportunities that we've gotten um, so far. I mean, and. And I still consider myself a company because we feel like we got a long way to go still, and we're yeah. just when we're kid, I'm still working hard because um, we got big goals and we're um, we're, we're definitely um, climbing the mountain. We're we're pushing hard, so um, we are finally uh, have a date. Uh, November tenth is going to be our debut album release, and we're just, we're so pumped because like we've done some EPs and we've done a live album, but like you know every band's dream is to make that first full album. So we're so excited to get it out. Um, we got to work with Ted from Pacifier. He produced the the album and um, and Nick from Pacifier did all the artwork, so we're very uh, yeah. very stoked. Um, it'll be out November 10th, and then November 12th we're playing the Root Fire Festival in uh, Coco, so that should be really cool. That that whole weekend, tie it in there, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a, a like a sax player we're bringing up. He's on the record, a great piano player, and then also Ted from Pacifier did a feature. Yeah, Sugar Shack is amazing. I mean, it's like a it's like a little house in the middle of. Uh, uh, Bonita Springs, Florida, and uh, it's just an amazing vibe there. Like it's so chill, and uh, everyone's great to work with there. Sugar Shack does amazing work, and uh, it's just like you can be yourself and uh, do a performance, and like it's just the vibe is unreal there. Yeah, they do an incredible job um, helping fans out, because um, basically uh, you'll go down there and and they don't charge you for the video, and it's basically like the bands help help them and they help the bands at the same time, like getting out their brand and also getting out the band's brands yeah. and they've had you know amazing artists on there like the green was one of their first big ones like and they've and since then like everyone's wanted to play there it's so cool what they do um and we, we went down in january and, and filmed three videos and then we went down last month and filmed three more and one of them came out and the next two are out um, in the coming months but they yeah they, they just do awesome work so we're, we're grateful, grateful for the, their help too so actually i'm, I'm a huge doors fan so uh Ray Manzarek, you know, their keyboardist played all their bass lines on a mini keyboard with his left hand while he played regular key parts. And I was just so struck by that because they never really had a bass player for live shows. And I just thought that was so unique and cool. And um, I, like, came up with the idea, of, like, to try that with the drums because I was, like, I had piano lessons and I so I knew piano and I was taking drum lessons at the time too. This is about five years ago. And I just said, let's just, I want to try this. And, and my parents thought I was crazy. I'm like, can I just, can you please just help me get a, with a little keyboard, I'm gonna try it, and I had to prove to them that I could do it. Like first, like going over to the piano, I'm like, no, look, I can do it. Like just let me, you know. And then we got it. I took a few months to practice it, and then we started gigging out as the Reese Brothers with that setup. And that that's um, it's given us a lot of opportunity because a lot of uh, we've been a band for a lot of cool uh, shows, especially with the Chicago tour. They only wanted a two piece or less to open for them, um, so it's easy on, easy off. Um, so that helped us get the, those tours really, and uh, so being the two piece has helped us a lot. Um, we definitely want to expand in the future. Like the duo is always going to be a big part of our show, but like the goal is um, in the near future to have a band 
so I can go up in front and more, so I can connect more with the audience as a front man also. But like maybe do half the shows a duo, half the show with the full band, kind of like the Black Keys used to do it that way um, when they first got a full band. So that's kind of what we want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, like me and him, like we we kind of listen to different music, you know. Like I'm, I listen to mostly reggae. Like that's that's my thing. Like that's how that's how I mix the style with. Um, he's more of a blues and classic rock, and uh, I mean we both like reggae a lot, but. Um, so I think that when we blend that together, it really creates something like unique. Yeah, he got heavy into yeah. it and, and influenced me in that way. And then I took my influences, like the blues and the alternative rock, and they combined that. But yeah, he's gotten me a, a huge reggae fan the last couple of years. And uh, we're fans of so many bands. And we, we tour with a lot of reggae bands now. And we're uh, really involved in that scene. And it's and uh, it's just it's an awesome scene because everyone supports each other. And it just feels like a, more of a community even so than other scenes. Like, right. They're the big ones. For yeah, sure. Stick Figure is like my favorite band. Uh, Scott is like just a genius. He like, produces all that and uh, records all the instruments. And yeah, but definitely uh, slightly stupid pacifier. Um, mm-hmm. You know, fortunate youth, big fans too. Um, Revolution and uh, yeah, there's a t- there's a ton of awesome bands out there, and it it's it's definitely a giant community, which is so cool to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, when we started out, we just, we wanted, to, we didn't know, like, anybody in the business, and we didn't know, like, how to do it, we just knew that we loved playing, so we're like, let's just go out and play and see if we can you know, make a run at this. So in the beginning, like, the only way to make fans is to play as many times as possible in our area, and sort of build that up, and then as you progress as a band, um, and now, uh, like, we're learning, like, it's, it's smarter now to do less shows in areas and make them bigger shows like so in our hometown we're only doing like four shows a year now when we used to do 100 like mm-hmm. so like now we can make them bigger because uh we're gonna do a cd release uh, at the state theater in december and we're very pumped about that like we're uh like it's now yeah now it's important to play small i, I know what you're saying about the uh the, the aspect of the crowds too i've heard that a lot and um i guess i mean for bigger bands i mean that's definitely a issue but right now like we're uh just want to play you know for whoever will listen and uh and yeah you because know. you never know like if there's four people you never know who those four people are you know yeah like, could be. we got the chicago tour through someone who just saw us at a beach bar and happened to know someone who worked for the band and like helped us to them so like if we had just like said okay yeah. there's like 20 people here we're not even gonna try like let's just like you know have some drinks and just like jam like you know like we could have done that but like we might not. Have, we probably wouldn't have gotten the tour. So we always think about that. Definitely. Um. Just uh, we learned from them um the work ethic uh just and to be able to see it like the one of the, the trumpet player he came off stage and was like it's a grind but like if you love what you do I mean then you never have to work a day in your life so like because they are they've been going like I said this is their fiftieth year and they um I, that's amazing to me and they just they just haven't stopped because they love what they do and and. To be able to reach that level where you have, um, like, that's our main goal. To be able to go to any town and and not worry if there's going to be people there. Like, to have, to know that there's going to be fans, like, that's our big goal. Like, with these bigger bands, like, all they do is book a show and then people will come. That's our goal in the future. And to have people there that know your songs, that just, that just feels like you'd never be working. It would just be so fun, you know. And, and we're, we're, yeah, we're working on it. We've learned to always be easy to work with, too. Yeah, uh, that's a big one. You know, be respectful to everyone, and you know, good things will come. Yeah, just be someone people want to work with, and people like when people are hear that you're going to be on a show, you don't want to be, be like, oh, okay, like, yeah. oh, we got to deal with the Reese brothers tonight. You know, we don't want anything like that. So be easy to work. That's another big one. Too. Uh, we just played with uh, Elemental Beat last night. Um, they're great live yeah. show, and their their album, the new album Surface, is is really good and definitely resonated uh, to be, we're resonated. big friends of them and yeah. they're uh, they're awesome uh, from from around here also so yeah right Ooh. now you go um i mean it's always stick uh but lately um Nile rise uh blue king brown uh they're from australia great lyrics and uh music um what else i've been listening to uh, this uh, newer band called hippocampus uh out of minnesota uh, really, really cool indie rock band, and we're so excited because they're on Root Fire also in November. So we're gonna play a festival with them. So I'm, I'm very pumped to see them. Yeah. 
yeah, everything's at Reese Brothers, uh, R-I-E-S, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat now, um, Spotify, YouTube. Yeah, and, and all of our shows are on ReacheBrothers.com. Life I've dreamed